Have you ever wondered what it's like to take a vacation and work at the same time? Welcome travelers. My wife and I have been working up to much longer vacations, up to two to three months in different countries, and we both work full time. And so we didn't start out this way. We had to learn. And now we're in Utah for a 10 day trip and we're skiing. It's a beautiful state, great hiking, superb skiing. And in this video, I really want to enable more people to be able to have the mindset of being able to work full time. You don't have to quit your job, enjoy travel. We made a balance and I think anyone can do it with the right steps. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you some of our experience and I'm hoping to do something similar. And we worked up to the point, now we can take two to three month trips while working full time. And it's not easy. There's a lot of challenges that you'll face trying to do such. And we started with smaller trips and something like the trip that we're on now, which is a 10 day trip for skiing. All right, why visit Salt Lake? So the important thing is Salt Lake is just really being able to just fly in, find a nice hotel located fairly close to the mountains. You can see just right behind me, the mountains within a 20 30 minute drive there's sometimes a traffic jam so it could maybe take an hour but it's not usual and so it's just a beautiful place to visit during the summer some people call it the greatest snow on earth and i have to agree from all the lot of places i visited it is world class in terms of snow quality because it's a desert the mountains are high enough and it's dry and so it's often cold during the winter and so the the snow stays really powdery for much longer here and so we have Snowbird, Park City, Alta, Solitude, and there's many more. They're all just 30 to 40, maybe 50 minute drive from the Salt Lake City, which has very convenient restaurants, places to, to see, good hoteling, and just places to visit and chill. And so Salt Lake City, and the people are very friendly too. So Salt Lake City is not only friendly, it's a working city, but a nice place to hotel and see the mountains. And there's lots of also nearby national parks to visit in the summertime as well. And another thing worth mentioning is it's very accessible. If you're a beginner skier, intermediate or advanced, you'll find something here. And honestly, some of the hardest runs in the United States you can find here. But there is a nice gap between beginner runs, intermediate and advanced runs here. So it's they really have something for everyone. And like I said, the snow quality is, is really superb. So it often stays very dry, fluffy, and powdery. If you're gonna get that anywhere, it's most likely to be here. Another nice thing about Salt Lake City is being able to just fly in and stay at fairly low cost hotels and have lots of options around for eating. Close to the highway, there's usually lots of businesses and it's a very much a working city. So Salt Lake isn't exactly super fun and as in terms of city, itself but there's lots of great things to visit around it and like i said cheap hoteling cheap food oh, okay no not cheap food very expensive food but there's plenty of options around you it's too costly to eat out you can always go to the grocery store day hotels they usually have a full kitchen kitchenette for you to cook things in what's great is when we flew into salt lake city we were no more than 20, 30 minute drive away from the hotel that puts us about 20 to 30 minutes away from the ski resort. We're staying at a home two suites, which I personally recommend in terms of just being able to stay somewhere off really nice gym, all the amenities, breakfast, and it's a good hotel. Also very pet friendly if you have a pet you wanna bring along for the trip. And here we are at the hotel gym. It's pretty nice, you know, honestly, I have been to a lot of hotels and usually you don't have this nice of gym. Of course, there's some better, but uh, Home Two Suites has been fairly regular. And I can't stress the importance of keeping to your regular workout routine while traveling. A lot of people ignore it. If, if you're on the go and fairly active on your trip, like climbing a mountain or, or walking around a city a lot, maybe it's okay to skip, but a lot of people lose a lot of muscle mass. So it's important to try and keep to your routine. One nice thing about running is you can do it anywhere at any time, even at nighttime. But in winter time especially, it's likely to snow or rain, especially in the lower lands. And so having access to a treadmill just keeps you to the routine, it's nice. All right, here we are. Our room, home away from home. We've been here for eight days now. 
And it is a bit of a mess. This is behind the scenes of how we work. It's a little messy, but the important thing is we're always somewhat uh, organized, especially when it comes to the end. We have all these packing cubes and it's kind of organized chaos, if you will. But you can kind of see our setup for work. This is where my wife works and you know, it's not exactly ergonomical, but it works. And here's the setup. Nice natural light. And beautiful view. So the nice thing about Salt Lake is how close to the mountains you are. That right up there is Snowbird. So, wow, we're really close. And you're never very far away and we're in civilization. Like if we're in Colorado, to be this close uh, you know or when we fly into denver it's like a two hour drive here we fly into salt lake it takes us about 20 minutes to drive to where we are in salt lake city and to this position but from there it's like a 30 minute drive up there so not bad okay and so one of the most important things when you're working remote is being able to make sure you can have a consistent schedule so utah i'm only offset by one hour from back home and so with that i can't go ski during the day so how we work on this 10-day trip is we work the weekdays and and only ski on the weekends and but what's nice is because it's salt lake there's a lot of restaurants a lot of options available you know a lot of places to go run and exercise this is a pretty nice hotel and in so the work week goes by pretty fast and and it's generally cheaper than flying back and, and forth. And so we can stay here for an extended amount of time as long as we're able to keep working, which is of course how we fund a trip. And so have that flexibility and be able to have those options. But what a lot of people struggle with is the ability to be able to work and maintain that schedule. And so when you do arrive, you have to treat work very seriously. And so what's kind of interesting is because we're in one room, obviously my wife and I, we have a lot of meetings. And so when that happens, it's usually I can go to a business room or she can step into a restroom or we'll, we'll figure something else. So we sometimes have those collisions and work those out with, you know, my, my spouse or whoever you're traveling with is important. And they're easy things to, to work out. And otherwise trying to make sure you're putting 110% into your work because, you know, you don't want the reason you don't want to re reason why your efficiency is dropping at work because you're traveling and so there's a lot of skills and a lot of things you got to work on to be able to make that work and i will say working while traveling is harder than just going to work in the normal schedule so i would say before you start trying to travel and work you have to be comfortable knowing you can give 100 120 percent or 150 percent even while traveling so even if you are getting tired you know your energy levels low because you're doing all these things during the day you have to feel comfortable that you can still get to 100 percent when you're working because you don't like i said you don't want your efficiency to drop while you're traveling or else your your co-workers your boss know you're traveling they're not going to like it they're going to tell you it's not acceptable you have to be able to do a good job okay so you'll notice that this video is edited a little bit differently. It's a little bit different pace. And the reason why is because I started this channel to be fairly information packed and I wanted to, to been traveling quite a bit. And I wanted to share a lot of the, the things I learned with scuba diving, skiing, mountaineering, and all the different places I've been with you, the viewer. And with that said, I favored, you know, the traditional YouTube way of quick edits and to try and keep it engaging and i realized maybe that's not the style i want to go with and i want to take you the viewer with me so you know instead of recording in a studio in a controlled environment where the sounds good i'll you know take the camera whatever i can take with me and i want to take you along for the ride and and show you a little bit more of who i am the adventures i go on the things i'm learning and also share that experience with me as as uh, i'm experiencing things myself and so if you like this style and you like this future of where these videos can take this channel let me know i really value your opinion in the comments below
What's important, if you're going to work on a trip, it requires a little bit of planning. And so some things that you have to factor in before you actually go on your trip is, are you going to have good internet? Is it going to be comfortable working spaces? And are you going to be, you know, not disturbed during the time you're working? And so usually the way we do it is we, in the U.S. it's a little bit easier because you have uh, certain chains that are catering to this work lifestyle and like the one we're staying in. However, we do a little bit of research beforehand into the hotels. A lot of hotels are now starting to show it's a competitive advantage. We have good internet. Uh, and so that's an indicator that you might be fine. But sometimes you have to dig in a little bit more into the comments and the reviews and sometimes call them up and double check. And, and when you arrive, make sure you tell them, hey, I'm going to be working in the room. Can you make sure I have good internet access? And sometimes they can make sure you're in a room that has that because not everywhere has a Wi-Fi router. And so maybe they only have a Wi-Fi router at the front desk. If that's the case, probably just the first floor, maybe the second floor has it. And so if you're on the sixth floor, you know, you're probably gonna have to work in the lobby, which may or may not work for you because I generally don't like working in public areas. I can, uh, but I feel that it does impact my productivity and ability to focus. And when I'm working, I wanna be hyper-focused and I want to be able to provide value. And so with that said, make sure you have that ability to focus. And uh, I usually put the do not disturb sign. I don't need the room clean and it works really well for us when we're working, you know, like extensive times like this. It's also worth noting that when you're packing, make sure you pack the right things. You've got to make sure you bring all your equipment. Usually like you saw, I have two laptops which is kind of is a lot. Uh, not everyone needs to have two laptops, but my work needs it. So make sure you pack everything you need, the two, the chargers you need. If you want a mouse, if you want an extra monitor. And I generally pack lights aside from two laptops. With that said, you do what you gotta do to make sure you can do the work uh, on the go and for an extensive amount of time and be comfortable doing it. And also you kind of saw I have a very makeshift work environment and we do that almost everywhere we go, it works. It's not super ergonomic, really friendly, and maybe I won't want to do it for months on end, but for the time that we're here, I make the best of it. We'll go and ask for better chairs. We'll make do with what we have. As long as you're comfortable and you can focus, that's the most important thing. So plan first, work with the hotel. They're usually very understanding, and you're usually a good place to make sure you can work fine and enjoy your trip with the time you're not working. I was just really impressed on how nice the Salt Lake City International Airport is. It is really quite nice. I'm jealous. I have to stress that it's not always fun and games. There can be a lot of stress when you kind of do this thing. That's why I advise starting small. Go with something as like a maybe a weekend, maybe a day and try things out, kind of get used to setting up and tearing down, especially multi-day, uh, especially moving different hotels. You have connectivity issues at different hotels. You have to get used to how the things you have to look for, the things you have to ask the hotel staff, and it just takes time. And so practice makes perfect, but don't start with something big and then watch it. Because this is your job that you're risking. I find it important that I always, whoever I'm working for, I always want to make sure I can give 110%. I want to be someone who is respected and professional. And I, I hope you do too. So we're not trying to teach a system, but what we are trying to do is live a full life. And sometimes you have to have a job to be able to fund this full life. How do you get the best job you can and be able to travel? It's not always, Roses, and you have to realize that. And there's a bunch of ways to improve how you how you do this. And it just takes some practice. Trouble with her bindings on her board. Doesn't look like we're gonna end on a good day. One thing that makes Salt Lake City a unique place to visit is it's surrounded by mountains, and you can see down in the valley the city I'm referred to as just the valley or a lot of people not from here will call the whole entire thing Salt Lake City. And so there's a bunch of cities in Salt Lake City, but regardless, 
along the highways, there's plenty of places to eat, hotel, more than plenty of places for restaurants, and they're all nearby. One of the key takeaways from this video I want you to instill is that you can work full time and travel. It's not easy. And honestly, you have to find the right job. You have to have the right skills and uh, you have to be able to have the right diligence while traveling. But my wife and I worked ourselves into it and we both had this goal of being able to travel and make this work. And we can travel very frequently now. I have to be very thankful for everything I've done up to this point, all the things I've been successful with and been able to travel as much as I, as I do now because none of it would have worked if I hadn't started practicing this kind of thing where we work remote. You have to have a remote job, yes, but you once you have one, you start working remote, you get used to being able to focus, you used to be able to make sure that you have the ability to be super productive and you have the daytime and if you're working in different time zones, sometimes you are working at nighttime and you have the daytime free, so that's even better. So it just kind of depends on where, you know, where your team is working. If you get and you've been trying to get better at the slopes, I have the perfect video for you to watch next, full of tips on improving your skiing capability. Check that out. Toast. Cheers.